call the meeting to order. Good. Agenda item two is public comment. The chair requests that there be no public comment on issues for which a prior public hearing has been held before the board of directors. Please note the public will have the opportunity to speak to specific items on the Metro Vision plan between the staff presentation and committee discussion. Is there anybody that wants to address the MVIC committee this evening? Seeing nobody, we'll close public comment. Agenda item three, summary of June 3rd, 2015 meeting. Any comments, changes, additions, corrections to the information for the June 3rd meeting? Yeah, we, we, we don't we don't really need a vote on the on it just acceptance um, so the summary of the meeting is accepted as presented informational items um, first of all I've uh, mentioned this at the other MVIC meetings but I'll mention it again we will have a hard stop at six o'clock uh, these are two informational items there's no action I'm sure there will be plenty of conversation but we will have a hard stop at six o'clock. Uh, I do want to point out that after the staff presentation on uh, agenda item four and before our committee discussion, there will be an opportunity for public to, to uh, address this committee and you will be asked your name, who you represent, and you'll be given three minutes for that public comment. So informational item four, a safe and resilient built and natural environment. Mr. Calvert. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is, uh, as, as mentioned, item number four uh, uh, on the agenda. I believe it's attachment B in the packet. Um, as the chair mentioned, this is an informational item. Um, what's included in your packet is obviously the summary memo, uh, the actual excerpt of the draft plan, particularly related to this plan element or, or overarching theme. Um, and then also we were able to give you uh, the presentation in advance as well. So because you've at least seen some of the presentation, I'll do my best to kind of move through it uh, pretty quickly. So this is, um, after this, you've, you've been briefed at least once on every single kind of primary overarching theme uh, within, within the document. Um, as we talked about at the board workshop, one of the ideas that, that, that came to the surface was the idea of treating this almost like a first reading, second reading situation to come in and brief you sort of individually on each element really before you take any sort of action. And so in some ways, think of this as the first reading related to uh, this particular um, item. Obviously, this committee has been spending a lot of time uh, on MetroVision over the past uh, few months. Uh, this is sort of the fifth and final overarching theme, sort of the primary um, part of the MetroVision uh, plan as drafted. Uh, you can see kind of what, what you've covered over the past few months. Um, obviously, if for those that have been here the fa past few months, you've spent uh, quite a bit of time on sort of the overall performance management um, aspect of the plan, particularly the foundational measures, um, April, May, um, and June, you spent some time on, on, on that. So you've been spending clearly a lot of time uh, on this issue. So a little bit about this particular plan element, chapter, theme, whatever the right term is um, of the plan. It really, it was formerly known as the environment section um, in MetroVision 2035, and frankly has some, some variation of it has, has, has existed since the very first MetroVision plan. It's been continuously updated um, over the years. It re the focus remains on um, air, land, and water, um, as it has been um, since the beginning of the MetroVision planning uh, framework. Um, a few new focus areas, both of which were present in the previous plan, that have really just kind of been elevated um, within the document. Um, one um, on working agricultural lands, and a second on regional and community resiliency. And then one deletion, which has actually been rare during this process, um, over, the, over the three years of stakeholder involvement um, uh, associated with this plan update, I didn't hear from one single stakeholder that thought the issue of noise and nuisance noise related to, to land use and transportation was worth continuing to include in the plan. So we decided 
uh, for the sake of, of, of getting at least one thing off, off our, our table to drop that or to propose to drop that from uh, this, this current section of the plan. Uh, so you've seen this a few times, but I think it's always good to kind of do a quick um, orientation on kind of the key terms, and, and Jerry's going to spend a little bit of time talking about this um, as well on the next agenda item. Um, we really are going to focus today's conversation on, the, on this highest level, this, these idea of outcomes, um, which the, the, draft, the plan as drafted includes 16 overarching regional outcomes that really, as noted here, are sort of the, the things that the region is asked, you know, aspiring to accomplish over the next 25 or 30 years, um, working collectively towards those, um, on, on, to the degree on the you know the path and the speed that's most appropriate for the for your own community's um, context. And so most of the presentation is really oriented um, around those um, those primary outcomes. If you were sort of to group everything else together, it really is, okay, how do, you, how do we point ourselves in a, in a certain direction so that we can accomplish those outcomes? And then obviously, how do we measure our progress um, uh, towards that outcome and, and objective? So in some ways, you could, you could group those together in, in, in a larger uh, grouping. So as I mentioned previously, uh, you know, four uh, overarching outcomes associated with this particular um, plan element, um, really related to, again, air, air and water, um, a, a focus on um, sort of parks and open space, um, creating and maintaining an, an interconnected network of widely accessible open space parks and trails. Again, elevating both the importance of um, agricultural lands, working agricultural lands, as well as um, really how this region can be prepared and respond, uh, particularly to uh, the effects of, of natural hazards. This reflects back um, to something that this group saw in April that we didn't get to spend a lot of time on um, because other things on the agenda sort of crept into the time. But as, as we've noted a few times over the past four or five months, um, trying to, to fit particularly the existing plan and the additions to, that, to the plan to the, to the or organizational structure we're trying to align to, doing a true red line version of this plan is practically impossible. So we've created this crosswalk. So for, for, for those that really felt like you want to understand how does something in 2035, Metro Vision 2035, translate or get carried over into the current uh, draft of the plan, this kind of does that. And really what this graphic tells you is that pretty much everything got carried over um, for Metro Vision 2035, obviously with, with some adjustments. Um, and this sort of illustrates kind of the, the, the noise element was really the one thing um, that really fell off, off the radar and that even um, sort of the idea of the importance of agricultural lands um, and uh, being prepared for, for natural hazards was actually included in the 2035 plan, but we really have just done it, uh, made it a point of emphasis this time around. So they have their own outcomes and they have their own set of, of objectives and supporting objectives. So in, in many ways, it was just sort of a reorientation of things that were already in the, in the adopted plan. So quickly, I'll walk you through each of those outcomes. Obviously, what's in red is sort of the, that key aspirational statement. And then I'll just quickly give you an idea of what maybe has changed um, from, from the previous plan sort of at, at, the, at the highest level. Um, so in terms of the, the eighth outcome in the, in the plan and the first one um, from this plan element is, you know, we aspire to be a region with clean water and air and with lower greenhouse gas emissions. Um, in terms of how maybe the, the the sort of the strategies and outcomes and objectives within that plan may have changed uh, from the last plan. Uh, air and water were previously um, handled separately. They were in sort of separate sections and they've been combined under a single outcome in, in this version of the plan. And there really is a, a real, uh, under this outcome in particular, a real emphasis on the, on the idea of collaboration, uh, particularly on the ideas of uh, improving and maintaining good air quality and, and water quality. On the air quality front, there's really an emphasis on particularly regional um, collaboration, whether that's Dr. Cog, uh, CDOT, and, and the RAC. And on the water quality uh, or water conservation side, it really is about member governments, uh, water providers, water users, the development community, thinking about conservation strategies that can ultimately result in um, lower demand uh, for water. So moving on to the next outcome, so outcome nine, um, an interconnected network of widely accessible open space uh, parks and trails. Uh, this section appeared um, in Metrovision 2035. 
I would say a lot of it really carried over. I would say that really what changed, if anything, is kind of two areas that stakeholders really just wanted emphasized. Um, and that was the idea of accessibility, that we have uh, a great asset um, in terms of a network of parks and open space and trails in this region, but it needs to be as widely accessible as possible to really make sure that we're taking the highest advantage of that asset. And I think the second one is really related to that, and, and that's the idea of we have a very good spine that with just a few um, uh, new connections could actually expand the system and the usability of the system um, around the region. So let's focus on really trying to create uh, those missing links in that parks, open space, uh, and trails network for the, because it would ultimately have quite a bit of regional benefit associated with that. Uh, next outcome, again, as I mentioned, uh, this appeared previously in the plan, but stakeholders really felt it needed to be elevated uh, to kind of its own outcome. Uh, and so working agricultural lands uh, of significance are conserved for current and future generations. Uh, the, the emphasis in this section is really on sort of the multiple dimensions associated with preserving the, those working lands, whether it's, um, you know, preservation is open space, whether it's sort of the economic contributions, whether it's recognizing the heritage um, of our region. There are a lot of things that you get out of um, making this a point of emphasis um, in terms of the regional dialogue uh, on this issue. Um, as I mentioned, it has been elevated um, and stressing those multiple roles, open space, um, contributions to the economy. And the other thing that, that really is emphasized here is the idea that production at all scales is really important from you know, the very small growing operation that really is maybe supporting a community garden or, or a farm stand all the way to large scale operations that are largely exporting uh, their crops. All of those things are really important for uh, a variety of reasons. Uh, final outcome uh, in this section of the, of the plan comes back to this issue of community resiliency that we talked about uh, back in April and we also spent some time on um, at the board workshop. And this particular plan element, that issue really does focus on the, um, the effects of, of natural hazards. As we discussed in April as a concept and an issue, it is actually covered in multiple sections um, of the draft plan. Um, and this really does, it, this builds on some momentum that was coming from, from board and the board in terms of direction um, over the last probably four or five years. Uh, back in, I want to say 2012, uh, the, there was a board initiated amendment to the existing plan um, that really asked, asked that the plan include something related to the importance of planning and development uh, within areas that were highly susceptible to wildfires and to make sure that there is something in the plan that recognizes in our region the importance of, of planning for those, those sort of events. Um, going on to the next year um, at the board workshop, uh, one of the things that we asked in, in the 2013 workshop was, tell us what issues, now that we're sort of actively entering into plan development phase, that are occurring in your community that really are things that are, that by nature maybe are regional that the plan ought to be thinking about. And this is one of those, one of, there were nine um, areas that really surfaced um, during that conversation. Uh, and these were, this was one of those nine to sort of think about resilient infrastructure uh, and, and communities. And I'll just sort of echo that, you know, this is, this is really from, from the board, but I was sort of surprised during sort of the stakeholder conversations how often we heard about this issue from all sorts of audiences, whether they were a community that has or has the potential to be impacted by a natural hazard to one that has just recently been through it. It was a universal thing um, that stakeholders around the region recognized um, the importance of addressing um, from a regional perspective. As noted in the, in the last bullet, um, as drafted, this particular piece really sort of focuses on limiting conflicts, um, thinking about integrated planning so that these areas can be planned for and then the role that potentially open space can play um, in limiting um, uh, areas that would be um, impacted by, by events, whether that's loss of life, um, economic issues, overall community disruptions, damaged property, those sorts of things. Let's, let's think about how we can, can, plan, can plan to limit uh, the impacts of these events. Um, as we've done with each of the other uh, five uh, themes, um, and you've obviously spent a lot of time on this. We've highlighted kind of the, the overall kind of performance measurement piece of this conversation. Uh, this uh, plan element has 
uh, one foundational measure associated with it. Um, obviously, you spent a lot of time on the foundational measure conversation over the past few months, which really just means it's a measure that also has uh, a future target associated with it. And, and this one really is related to the, to the greenhouse gas emissions and achieving a 60% per capita uh, reduction between 2010 and, and 2040. Um, this was for this group um, that was among the, the group of foundational measures that you agreed uh, last month to send to the, send to the board for uh, their consideration. Uh, but as, as we've noted, I think Jacob did a really good job of noting this last month on the connected uh, multimodal region uh, portion of the, of the plan. Those foundational measures are a very small subset over, of an overall performance, performance management um, framework that's, that's outlined in the plan. As, as he noted last month, there are 75 or so measures that are currently proposed in the plan. About 40 of them really are directly related to transportation, and the, uh, the other half you know, are affiliated with, with, with um, uh, other areas uh, of interest within the plan. So you see things um, that we also propose to measure uh, related to, for instance, the number of, of air quality violation days um, that the region experiences in a, in a calendar year. Um, the, the amount of parks and open space that are accessible to our region's growing bicycle network. Um, you know, I talked a little bit about sort of the um, amount of uh, the, the role that parks and open space can, can play um, in hazard mitig mitigation. So how much land have we preserved in places that really are highly susceptible uh, to those sorts of, of events? And that really concludes um, my presentation. As I mentioned um, kind of in the opening, you know, we sort of have viewed this as a first reading to kind of put something in front of you, maybe hear what your initial uh, reactions are to, to, to what maybe you uh, read prior to the meeting or what we covered um, during the presentation. So I'm happy to hear comments, uh, take questions, and, or just listen to the discussion. Okay, before we open it up for the committee, uh, I will offer the, anybody that's in the audience that would like to comment once again, this is your opportunity to comment on what we're talking about with the uh, with MVIC. Is there anybody that would like to address the committee? Seeing nobody, I will open it up for committee discussion. Mayor Mayor Pro Tem Malay. I just had a question regarding the um, kind of the resiliency of of the communities and kind of the failing infrastructure. Is that something that we're looking at measuring or is it being measured in one of the other secondary <coughs> measures? Because, I mean, I think we've got a number of critical pieces of infrastructure that are kind of meeting their, or, you know, are at their useful life or are deteriorating. And how is that being considered in the whole resiliency? I, I think that's a very good point. I, nothing is coming to mind of the 75 that would that would get at that, but you know it's a long list. I, but but you know people there are you know sort of life cycle information out there about current infrastructure that I, that I assume would be something that we could at least try to figure out a good data source to try to put that information in front of you as a as a performance measure. Well, I just think it's important for us to know that we do have this failing infrastructure. That when we do have these devastating flooding and all these other things that really um, we spend a lot, you know, life and property damage associated with it. I just think we need to keep it in, in mind. In addition to the wildfires, I think this is part of it. And then the other um, question I had uh, regarding that the, the infrastructure, and maybe this is covered somewhere else, is kind of development within um, uh, flood areas in the region. Like, so we know we've had some areas that were developed prior to really a better knowledge of the 100 year flood storms and those type of things. So. Where, where are we kind of keeping track of, of that? And I, is, that being, is that being looked at? You know, development, I think, in areas that within the 100-year flood plan, I know it exists within the region, so. That, that has not been something that, that Dr. Cog has focused on a lot, particularly in the last five years. Um, about five years ago, we had a role in um, developing a regional um, hazard mitigation plan that would have looked at, at issues like that, but it frankly has not been an area of focus for us as an organization in the last five years or so. Okay. Mayor Atchison. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just, uh, Brad, if I may refer to outcome nine, there's been some discussion in the past, as I recall, of how we're going to determine where these missing links are. And I think that was a, an intent of Dr. Cog to work with the various counties and municipalities on their current trail maps to try to get those updated 
so that we even can start to identify that. Am I still correct in that, or am I off base? So I'll answer that. Jacob Rieger from our transportation staff. We are actually currently working with our uh, local governments, municipalities, on our regional bikeway corridor vision map as part of our transportation plan. So for the past couple, three months, we actually have been meeting uh, with local jurisdictions to do that very thing. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mayor Pro Tem Veal. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. On, uh, on outcome number 10, uh, the, the outcome is really very clear. It says working, working agricultural lands of significance are conserved. But then on the objective, 10.1 uh, says maintain the region's agricultural capacity. Uh, City of Thornton is uh, it's, all of its growth is happening uh, up in the north, and it's all agricultural uh, land going up there. But they're not working agricultural property, so uh, the the objective doesn't seem to be that clear itself. But I don't know whether we we need to uh, identify that as maintain the region's working agricultural capacity as to just agricultural plain agricultural period. Because uh, uh, that's what's going to happen in Thornton. It's going to take all of the agriculture up in the north. Executive Director Shuffle. Yeah, I just wanted to get clarification, Val. Are you, are you making a, a differentiation between what's zoned ag and what's actually zoned ag and is actually there's Working. tractors and things growing right. and Working. that sort of yeah, thing? Yeah. Just exactly. wanted to be sure I was clear. Yes. There's, there, it's all zoned ag, yes. Commissioner Holland. As to position uh, nine, uh, goal nine, I mean, R Rappo County has an aggressive open space program. We actually have a taxing district that affects that. And uh, one of our primary goals is to, is to complete access to uh, open space uh, and trail con conductivity throughout the, throughout the region. And I think that uh, uh, it's, a, it's certainly a worthy goal, and, and uh, we'd be help ha you know, happy to work with you to uh, show you what we've already done. Yep. Mayor Horn. Thank you. Um, and I just wanted to add on to Val's comment. I don't know if there's any place in the plan for it, but as we move forward with the state water plan, um, production land is going to be really critical, and, and keeping that in production is going to be really critical. Alternative buy and dry methods, for example, to just buying and drying and taking it out. So I don't know if there's if we should address it or if there's any place to put it, but I think that is going to be pretty critical, especially as we develop. So I saw three hands along here. I've got Cernanek, Stolzman, and then Jones. Mayor Cernanek. Uh, thank you, Bob. Uh, concern, uh, or at least looking for clarification as we start to take a look at some of these measures, uh, Mayor Horn, uh, talked about the state water plan and uh, within that uh, there is a lack of um, common consensus understanding of things like per capita use. Uh, for example, does that include commercial use? Does it exclude commercial use? Um, do you subdivide it between uh, what might be suburban versus urban versus rural uh, and uh, just Putting that one piece there on the per capita use um, is probably going to get refined with the state water plan. And, and also, there's a related item uh, related to um, Mayor Pro Tem Veal's comment uh, about uh, agricultural um, non use and, but water rights attached to that uh, and the responsible use uh, of that. Um, you know, Thornton has a particular approach. Uh, other areas have uh, what is uh, not as nicely viewed called buy and dry um, that's out there as well. And so I did separate, right? <laughs> okay. Um, so that uh, the, uh, the, the measure for agricultural um, uh, production being employment, uh, I think there's been a continuous decline in the employment level. And so I might put some question marks related to that as a, as a measure for agricultural production, which I think could be measured maybe a little bit differently. Councilmember Stolzman. 
Yeah, Brad, could I just get a little clarification on your answer uh, to Mayor Pro Tem Malay about um, resiliency in the floodplain area? I was under the impression Objective 11.1, .1, which talks about measuring high risk areas protected as open space or park. And then if you read the footnote, it talks about that that may include floodplains, steep slopes, or wildfire areas. So I sort of thought that that um, building area or, you know, built area in floodplains would be covered in that section. Just to clarify, my question is about what measurement are we doing to look at that? I didn't see that listed under the measure discussion. So uh, other plan performance measures, there's, so we may have words to the effect, but there's no measure associated with it, so then how actually are we doing it? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Jones. Yeah, focusing on that same section, I think we're probably a little bit preoccupied with um, the September 2013 flood up in Boulder County, but it's sort of still very front and center. And um, I wanted to make sure that there was enough emphasis on what we're referring to as resi resiliency, as re recovery that um, doesn't just put things back in place, but does it in a better way. So, and better is defined as a road that's less likely to wash out again, a repairing corridor that's more, is healthier and more able to hold floodwaters better than it has in the past, um, development um, decisions, like we're doing some buyouts of um, homes that were damaged in, and that are in the floodway are not safe places to redevelop, but those property owners need a way out. So things that make our communities safer and um, less likely to suffer damages in future events. So I just want to make sure that that concept is captured in, in the, we talk about recovery, just that we're not just returning to the status quo, that somehow we're, we're doing a better job and I want to make sure that sentiment's there. I also um, wanted to add that a, a, a perhaps an appropriate measurement and under outcome 11 might be the number of municipalities in the region that have a hazard mitigation plan, that that could be a goal. You know, we're encouraging everybody to, to do hazard mitigation plans. We can say um, from firsthand experience, having those plans in place is essential, but also updating them on a regular basis. So my third point would be there may be a strategy around um, dialogue post-disaster dialogue in the region with cities and counties um, and the lessons learned and then putting into place measures to improve upon that, uh, both with response and recovery. Every disaster that we've had, and we've had several recent with the Four Mile Canyon fire and, and then the flood, we, we have gotten better at dealing with disasters and we can keep refining the process. I'm sure El Paso County has the same message. I've heard them say that at CCI. So something about, um, I think that could be a role that Dr. Cog might play in other regional bodies in convening our jurisdictions to talk about what we've learned and how we can do things better and then refining those plans that we're encouraging. Commissioner Rozier. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we're taking this as like a shotgun approach, just kind of, we're, we're all over the, the board here. So I didn't know if you wanted to proceed with that method or if we should, because I have multiple questions on multiple items here and I didn't know if you wanted to go, you know, eight, nine, 10, all the way through. But I'll, I'll just begin with saying that um, I, I agree with uh, Mayor Cernanek's, um discussion when it comes to looking at water and buy and dry. I'm very concerned with the language that's that's listed in here as far as conservation. Coming from my, my stepbrother's own farms out east and water rights is a big key to their success and um, to be able to sell that water right it's like owning a piece of property. It, it's associated with the property. So when you start looking at and trying to bifurcate and saying that you can't buy and dry, you can't sell, you can't do different things. Um, this gets into livelihood. This gets into a property rights discussion that I'm very sensitive of because it hits very close to home. And um, for me, I, I, I really do not, when, when it talks about 
preserving you know active moving farms in the future if I'm a farmer and I want to get out of the business I want to sell um, that's my right and so we're taking, to, to me when I look at this, there's a lot of local control issues, a lot of shall ensure that this occurs, other items, and it, it's missing the point that uh, Mayor Poro Tim Malay brought up in, in the fact that we have existing failing infrastructure. This is all, as they say, rainbows and unicorns. This is all in future. So what about the stuff that's failing today? What about roads? What about our other infrastructure needs that are not identified on here? There's a lot of discussions on, on incentives. There's no discussion on where those incentive dollars come from. So if we, if we need to, if we're, if we're going to take the approach that we're doing this evening as far as just, you know, going from eight, objective eight to nine to ten, that's fine. Um, I'll submit my comments, but it's it's highlighted. I, I feel this is a, a, a direct attack. We just came from a watershed meeting, uh, Commissioner Partridge and I, and we had this discussion. This is in direct conflict with our watershed authority right here. This is getting into the watershed authorities, what, what we do as a watershed authority. So at, at what point do we say enough's enough? We know what's best for the Chatfield Watershed Authority. Let us handle it. Let us take local control. Let us handle for fire protection. Let us handle for recovery. But if we're going to try to standardize this and take away and, and tie our hands, I, I, I don't agree with this is a direct attack on local control. Thank you. And Commissioner Rosier, since this was an informational item, I didn't structure it as going from eight to nine, but um, if you have other other comments specific, I'd be more than happy to entertain them. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. They're quite extensive, and I would take the entire two hours. I'll send them directly to you. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem Thank you, Mayor. I, and I was going to respond to uh, Commissioner Jones's comment about uh, about the restoring and I mean it has nothing to do with with the items in here but I think it's something that uh, uh, Dr. Cog needs to be looking at it but if I'm, if I'm not mistaken I know the city of Thornton was told by FEMA when we were trying to recover some of that stuff is that you cannot go beyond the original stage where it was at so you can't use those that money to make the road better so it doesn't wash out the, the, the next time itself so uh, it's it's something that maybe we uh, as a Dr. Cog or as cities as a whole need to start lobbying FEMA on, on, on that issue because it just doesn't make any sense at all whatsoever to rebuild something that's just going to wash out the next time it floods again as opposed to trying to prevent it. You know, so I just wanted to make that comment. There's a lot of things around here. It's so Other comments or questions on agenda item four? Commissioner Holan. I, I think one issue that, that kind of, when we talk about the inf infrastructure issue that, that, that emerges from these discussions is that um, we, we really have not offered an answer. Um, the, uh, the commitment that is going to be required just to bring our, our road and bridge system in Colorado up to speed is is well over a, a billion dollars. Um, and to protect against future problems, it's going to even be more. The, how, the, the Senate uh, Transportation bill, uh, Committee yesterday uh, approved a, a bill for $277.5 billion over five years to give to the state. Even with that incredible amount of money, it's still ninety billion dollars short of what we need to to bring our roads back to back to uh, a, a reasonable, uh, safety, safe and, and and productive standard. So, I think we should address some of those issues directly in how do we get from A to B, and I don't see it in this report. Commissioner Jones. Um, I just wanted to respond to some of the comments about agricultural lands. Uh, I think I was reading um, the words here as being voluntary 
um, and sort of region-wide aspirational because I, I, I totally understand and acknowledge the concern if it felt if it would feel like we were making um, parcel by parcel decisions and impacting private property rights I don't think that's something that um, any place that we want to go, but as uh, but we um, in my region have been doing some successful ag land preservation, and um, and again it's voluntary because people get to do what they want with their lands. But it's been successful in, in, in two two ways that have been particularly um, I think helpful is and from an economic perspective, providing an opportunity to support local farmers and that portion of the ag economy that is is struggling a little bit, particularly, um, you know, as we urbanize, the ag infrastructures that used to support farming isn't always there. So um, where it's possible and useful and desired, um, I think having a, a goal around supporting the ag economy is a useful thing. I would also say it dovetails nicely with um, a growing emphasis that I think is, is region-wide, certainly uh, um, in our neck of the woods, of a focus on local food. Um, both from a um, food insecurity issue, um, certainly a local farmer issue, but an increasing focus on health and um, healthy eating and and having that ha you know uh, be a part of um, our accessible food supply from from school classrooms to um, everyone you know farmers markets so um, Viewed in that light, I think that this the section on on working farms, um, viewed as sort of an aspirational um, piece, makes uh, makes sense. Um, but I did want to acknowledge those comments about, you know, I don't I don't read it, and I certainly wouldn't support it being a, um, something that impairs private property rights. Councilmember Teal, I actually like a lot what uh, Commissioner Jones was just talking about. Uh, the issue is. Can we uh, make sure we're talking agriculture and not just farms? Because coming from a very rich agricultural region where if you try to dig more than three inches into that soil, you run into rock after rock after rock. Um, as long as, let's just make sure that's full spectrum agriculture. Because uh, yeah, you know, 30, 40 percent of Douglas County is preserved for agricultural conservation into per perpetuity. So uh, I think that's... Uh, Sounds good. All righty. Seeing nobody jumping up and down ready to speak to this topic, it is an informational item. There is no no need for a vote. So we will move on to agenda item five. Uh, next steps on MetroVision issues. I know that it has Mr. Calvert's name there, um, but uh, we are going to ha ask our executive director to uh, speak to this. And I believe that Mayor Pro Tem Malay had some comments that she wanted to. Uh, not regarding this. I, just, I guess I, I just want to have an understanding of the process. So we provided some comments tonight. What's going to happen with the comments that were given this evening? And how is it going to come back to us? Or is it going to just go to the board? I mean, that's, you know, we, I don't know that we had agreement. I think a lot of people had a lot of ideas. W where does it go from here, I guess, is my. Mr. Calvert. Uh, so it's actually sort of mentioned in the, in, the agenda, in the next agenda item in terms of how this is. Okay. We asked the board, right after the board workshop, one of the things we did at the board workshop is talk about what does this process look like, right? And so we got a lot of feedback, and so we put an item in front of, in front of the board, I guess that would have been March, um, in terms of how, the, how you want to handle sort of this deliberation or review process. Um, and so what I, just so you, I will tell you what I'm doing. I have obviously taken notes. We've specifically had people take detailed notes at, at all of these conversations so that we understand what the discussions have been. Um, in terms of suggesting specific revisions to, to the plan that the board would consider, um, the way that the board action um, is written is that it would take a consensus opinion of this group that we should, that you should direct staff to make a certain change one way or the other. So for instance, you, you mentioned, I think, you know, I wrote down the measure that you mentioned that maybe is missing. And so when we circle back probably in September about very specific revisions that this committee wants to see, we will put that in front of the group and the group will give us guidance as to yes, yes or no, whether that is something that you would want to forward on to the board. Point of clarification. Could you define the word consensus as you're using it? Uh, not unanimity. Uh, the way that I always think of, of consensus is 
the, you know, some, 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 some fair percentage of this group can, can live with that outcome. That's, that's the way I, I fair think percentage. of it. It's like majority? Or is that, I just I, don't, I, it's, you know, I, I, I don't anticipate votes, but this, you, this is your, in some ways I think you have some, some control over how, over how that works. So okay. maybe that's something we, could, we should talk about before we start. Is that a fair? Sure. Just, to, okay. just that expectation. Yeah. Okay. Agenda item five, next steps. Jennifer? Yeah, actually, I'm going to turn this over to Jerry Stiegel in just a minute. But um, as, the, as the memo states, now you've now seen all the major themes uh, that are in the Metro Vision Plan. And um, as you've heard Brad say many times that um, this is all this input that we've received over the last almost three years from uh, from various stakeholders and in fact we've used the analogy many times that they've set the table but actually I guess it's a better analogy to say that they have set the buffet you get to go through and pick what uh, uh, actually goes into the Metro Vision Plan and what uh, uh, maybe goes away or gets changed um, We've spent a lot of time in the last uh, several months um, talking about performance measures and targets. And I think it's time now probably to take a little bit of a step back and put this back into some context and, and talk about uh, a more um, uh, holistic uh, view of how we're doing the, the MetroVision strategic planning process. And this is really uh, Jerry's specialty, so he's going, and I know that you've seen some of this stuff uh, before, especially those of you who participate in the structure governance um, uh, discussions. You've seen uh, some of the work that um, is behind this strategic planning process. But Jerry is going to explain the Dr. Cog approach to how we're, uh, we're we as staff are addressing MetroVision, and and like I said, we're, we want to kind of take a, a step or two back to to put some context around these measures and targets that you've talked about to uh, kind of get back to basics, I guess, maybe as a, as a good way, starting even with mission and vision. So um, I'll just turn it over to, uh, to Jerry, and then he and Brad and I can answer any questions that you have uh, once he's finished up with his presentation. All right. Thank you, Jennifer. Good afternoon. Uh, first order of business for those of you in the room. My apologies for the major glitches that occurred during Jennifer's eval. I know some of you went two or maybe three times to do that, so that's not intentional. Yes, Mayor. And, uh, but thank you for doing that. And we've got the workaround, thanks to Elise, and we talked a lot about that in email. Uh, but the solution's fixed for the future, you know, for future surveys. Okay. Uh, primary purpose for me today is to use Brad's presentation to really describe or illustrate how all the components you've been working on fit together. Um, one of the things that you'll see the two charts on each side of the room, I refer to them as fraternal twins, like my twin granddaughters, but they're a lot quieter uh, than they are. If you look at it, uh, we've got some terms, and they differ on both of these. You'll see the green pyramid up above me and on the screens. But terminology in strategy work is absolutely essential to nail down. And I think when I'm looking at some of the content in the MetroVision, it seems to take some deviation away you know, from a basic framework. So what I'd like to do is two things. I'd like to go through this framework, and then Anna is going to give you a handout that's going to show you what it looks like in this presentation that you saw today. Is that acceptable? Okay. Okay, so let me just cover this. Step one is really covering the model, make sure we're on the same baseline. You recall we have revised mission vision as of February or approved as of February last year. Missions are about purpose. It clarified the purpose of this organization, but the vision sets the future destination. So mission and visions were the critical starting point for this kind of work that we're talking about, the strategy work. In the strategic perspectives, I'm going to touch on those. That's a balanced scorecard term, but it's what balances your scorecard. And we, it forms a balanced approach to strategic planning and, strategic, and strategy management by including views of customer, financial, internal process, and the learning and growth. Those are the general 
perspectives in a scorecard. And I want to go past those. Overarching themes and outcomes. Those are familiar. You saw the one theme today with the out and several outcomes. Those themes or plan elements is a term that we've used too. Are those value-based aspirational, if you will, goals that this board decides or the board decides we will pursue? I've heard some conversation about are they aspirational or achievable? I want to talk about that. So your outcomes are aspirational because they're vision-like. They are some view, some ideal view of the future. But we have to be pragmatic. So we step back from that outcome, those outcomes, and we design the next component. Well, let me stop for a minute. Let me give you an example of this outcome. A region with clean water and air and lower greenhouse emissions. You just saw that one. So hold that thought. Now the objective. If I just leave that one in place, this long-term high-level outcome, it can't be operationalized very easily throughout the organization. So the next component that you design from the outcome has to be the objective. And the objective is the continuous improvement potential that gets us from one place to the next. For instance, I say hold that thought, a region with clean, clean water, air, and lower greenhouse gas. If we were to convert that now to something we can continually focus on, it might sound something like reduce VMT, reduce greenhouse gas emissions, seen those, improve air quality. The key thing with an objective is that the verb is the format. It's a verb and object, and that verb tells us which direction is good. So when you see the, that format of reduce VMT, imp increase non-SOV mode share, you know by virtue of that configuration that it is a, an objective component, which now brings us down in altitude for better clarity about the outcomes and the vision. The next piece talks about a strategy map, and that is a visual piece. I'm going to move on beyond that one and just get down to performance measures, but that's something we have and will design is to, to show a visual uh, display of our strategy. Performance measures and targets. How will we know if we are achieving the results we want? Let me give you a definition of performance measurement. A performance measure is a comparison that provides objective evidence of the degree to which a performance result is occurring over time. Okay, So it's objective comparison of evidence over time to see how we're tracking. Well, here's the problem with objectives and measures. They don't do anything. There are no legs on those animals. What gives objectives and measures legs, momentum, are the projects you select, the strategies you decide, the action stra strategies we call them, but the really key strategic projects and initiatives. It's the last thing we talk about. When we design strategy, we start at outcome, we create a destination, we decide what continuous improvement activities we can engage in to reach that destination, we determine what measures inform us best on how well we're progressing, and we design initiatives to drive our strategy. Okay. <laughs> Now, is anybody tired yet? Or is your brain hurting? So I need to check with you and see, how's that washing with you? Is it, is it making sense? Let me try this one. I see some affirmation. I see maybe some puzzlement. Strategy is linear. Okay. So before I go and show you this example, I'm going to find out what questions or comments you might have about what I've presented so far. Anna will bring you a handout that I want to walk from left to right with you to show you why and how strategy is actually linear, not hierarchical. Okay. Questions or comments so far? Yeah, questions or comments. Mayor Cernanek. Jerry, thank you, Bob. Uh, one of the things that we've had is uh, struggling with uh -huh. uh, as we've been on our journey together uh, has been separating what is in the plan uh -huh. versus what might the MBIC plan, okay, the Metro Vision plan, uh -huh. uh, yeah, versus what might be used in some of our um, 
criteria that we use to select strategic projects. Okay. Uh, and the particular example is when we get the TIP scoring. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, at the risk of distracting you from taking us to the promised land, um, maybe you could maybe comment about um, how these relate. And, you know, Jennifer's made some comments, but now that you're giving us a uh, linguistic <laughs> for, uh, foundation, yeah. uh, you might want to take some of that on. And, and just repeat the question for me, if you would. Um, as we're looking at performance measures here as part of the Metro Vision plan, uh -huh. um, how much do they relate or not as we move to things like tip scoring? Okay. I cannot comment on that one, obviously. I mean, I don't have a clue. <laughs> but if somebody else is welcome to, to do that, I would love to, Phil, but I just I don't really know where that's going to end up. Uh, if I were to suggest what I would use to determine what projects, it would be a focus on outcomes, in a sense. It would be focusing on the outcomes you will and or have designed and determine which projects have the best likelihood of affecting that outcome. So as a sidebar, but um, I know that conversation is going on internally. Uh, so let me, now let me go back to something. So we're going to focus on that framework in front of you, not really the content. J Jerry, real yes. quick, let's just make sure, are there any other questions or comments? Okay, thank you. Okay, go ahead. Certainly. Now I'm going to repeat what I just said. Strategy <laughs> is linear. Okay, When we can put it in a linear format, we start to see the relationship from what we're trying to accomplish, which is the first thing we establish. We drive a stake in the ground on the outcome. We back away from that and decide how we're going to get to that outcome. Think of it this way. I ask this question a lot. How many of you plan a vacation, start saving, do all the planning for a place you don't even know you're going yet? Most people come up with some form of a destination. That's what outcomes are, destination points. So if you look at the far left, we've got an overarching theme, plan element, outcome, a safe and resilient natural and built environment. Outcome 8, a region with clean water and air and lower greenhouse gases. That's a statement. That's a mini vision. The next column deals with what we need or should focus on as a continuous improvement effort to further that outcome. It drops it down in altitude. So it's written like an objective because it has the verb object format. That's how we know. And this is a critical piece to nail down. If we don't, we've got goals looking like measures, like initiatives, and all that weird stuff. And John and I were talking earlier, I've seen a lot of strategy documents. And rarely do they put it together in this fashion where you can start at the end and work backwards and see if this all makes sense. So if you look at the objectives, the objectives will help us drive that outcome. Performance measures will inform us to the extent we're doing that, along with the targets and the action strategies are those strategies that should or will eventually drive objectives and further that outcome. So when I mentioned earlier, outcomes are aspirational, but objectives are achievable. So you have both. So I'm going to stop for a moment and let you study that. The only thing we really need to look at is page one. You have that entire theme and everything in all those pages. So I've, I have put all that together, Brad actually too, put it all together so you could start to see the relationship from the far left all the way to the end. And that's how strategy works. Does that make sense to anyone or not? Yes. It makes absolutely good sense to me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it makes good sense to me. I mean, but we've been through this process essentially in Lakewood three times in the last six months. So. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of been drilled into my head with our comprehensive plan or sustainability plan, actually four times, and a couple of area plans. And they've all essentially followed the same the same path. Does it make so, then it, yeah. it organized? I think you've done a good job of explaining it. Oh, thank you. Uh, here's the thing. There's some great work in Metrovision 2035 when I first got here. There's some great work coming out in 2040. It needs to be organized in a way that you can see that line of sight. That's what we're creating is that line of sight between the outcome and all the things back to the objective, to the measures, targets, and the initiatives. That's the line of sight that has to be established. If we're 
you know, when I talk to strategy, talk strategy to people, the first thing they start telling me are all the things you're going to do. Strategy is not the sum of all the tasks and things you do. It isn't. And my colleagues have heard this phrase that I don't care about what you want to do until I understand what you want to accomplish, i.e. an outcome. And I'm saying that in a way just to illustrate the point that the outcome is the most important thing you can nail down first. And my recommendation to this group, if you're open to that, would be that's where I would head back to, is really making sure you have nailed that outcome down. And if you say yes, we're ready to move to the next component. Other questions or comments? Yeah, questions or comments, please. Commissioner Jones. So um, in terms of how we might apply this going forward, then it would seem that our walk through the draft Metro Vision Plan seems to have started in the middle yeah. and kind of got stuck there. <laughs> and it sounds like, based on this conversation, the thinking is to move back to the start and start from there. And is, is that the game plan to actually start with the outcomes, sort of reach alignment on outcomes and objectives before Precise. we return to the performance measure? Correct. In strategy design, I'll tell you what's interesting. People will start talking about measures before they really understand what they're connecting them to. And not, that's not necessarily the case here. What happens is the way you get content chunked at you, it's easy to lose the context, Jennifer's term, of where those fit. So that's what we do. We bring context back when we can look at strategy. Strategy is both strategic and tactical. So the far left outcome is the strategy component. You go to the far right, you're at the tactical level. So it's both, if that makes sense. Councilmember Diet, sorry. So uh, t t to more or less operationalize these uh, these performance measures, uh, what do you suggest uh, we get as uh, a dashboard and, and the frequency that it comes back to us so we know we're accomplishing or we're moving forward? It seems it seems as though if you have these performance measures, we should have some sort of annual review or bada boom, bada boom. or every six months. I, I don't know. Can you please articulate? Yeah, I will. Thank you. Uh, board reporting is essential. When you design these systems, and actually John and I had this, and Jennifer's heard me use this phrase, every time you're doing strategy, you do not come into the organization and go, all right, time out. Everything's on hold. Right? We're building the airplane in flight every time you do it. I promise you. It's like building one in flight. So there are some things that's the two ships analogy. We're on this ship and we're building this one. Pretty soon we're going to be ready. But it takes time to do it. That's why only 10% of the organizations do it well. 90% do it average or not at all. So the key thing is, is the dashboard comment, we have an application called QuickScore that is designed around all the components we're talking about that will allow those folks who need to see that dashboard, we'll design it, we'll make sure it has the relevant information, it's updated, we'll make it available to you. So the key is the reporting and the available data. But we don't have, just want to clarify, real-time data. You know, it's not that kind of system. It's updated quarterly to the frequency question. It might be a monthly frequency on the measure. You have basically the three standard frequencies of measures. You can measure things monthly. You can measure things quarterly. You can measure them yearly. Higher frequency tends to be better, particularly with process measures. Okay, with certain kinds of activity measures, a higher frequency because it gives you an indicator of what's about to happen. So we get into this lead lag conversation of metrics. Did that answer at least in part? Okay, thank you. Mayor Proton Malay. So if I'm reading this correctly, then these tactical or action strategies that are on the far right are what we're going to be doing, not just Dr. Cog, but entities throughout the region are going to be doing to achieve the targets that we've identified. Yeah, these, these are, from what I understand now, this is an area, I'm going to tell you right now, everything from targets to the left I'm comfortable with. This is an area that probably my colleagues have more expertise in, but what I do know, these are just exemplary. They're just examples of the types of things you could do. It is by no stretch of the imagination right, a holistic point. list. Yeah. And it's not just what Dr. Cog is going to do, it's what our partners, Community local, partners, absolutely. everybody is going to mm -hmm. do. But, but the, but what we're designing here, though, is 
to use the roadmap, these tactical action strategies are going to be what, what we expect the region to be doing to accomplish, the, and, and we mean the region, not just Dr. Cog, mm -hmm. to accomplish these performance measures to come to the targets identified in performance measures. Thank you. Anything well, else? Jerry, did you have a close? Yeah, I just have one last thing. If you approve of this look, what we'd like to do for August is to come back with all themes, measures, and results in this format. It will give you the holistic look of each. You can determine if we're looking at the right measures based on the objective that's to the left of it, all that. Is that something that would be of value to you? Councilmember Teal. Well, yes, Jerry, it would. <laughs> that's all I need. Thank you. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah, I mean, this, this reminds me, guys, uh, this goes back 20 years when I was a young Army officer. There you go. This is very much like what the Army does uh, to plan your training you know, from the Pentagon all the way down to those uh, rifle squads that are actually going to be um, shooting bullets. So, no, I, I think this is fantastic. I would very much like to see um, that broad, you know, spectrum okay. uh, in August. For me, it will have immense value. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Holland. I, I think it's important to recognize that, that um, um, defining these goals and providing a um, matrix that's capable of quantifying those measurements is really the challenge. It is. And, and um, uh, we're struggling with that at, at the county level. We have a very extensive performance management program that goes down to each division and each individual worker. And uh, they're enthusiastically embracing it because finally they have something they can measure their the quality and 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 effic efficacy of their uh, of, of achieving their goals. So I, I certainly endorse this process. It's just that it, it, it it's hard when you look at long term uh, goals and, and and that's that's the key. How do you provide uh, effective matrix to measure those? And I'd like to just comment on that because that's exactly right. It's very difficult to focus on those long-term things, and that's why I'm going to come back and repeat myself, forgive me, that's why that objective component is so critical to the outcome. It, it sort of brings that thing down to something you can tangibly grab and think about and start working, but the measures are associated with those objectives, and we have a process of how we develop measures, and some of my colleagues here have been through that in our uh, internal scorecard work. So thank you. Mayor Horn. Um, so just a comment. I, I think this is really an excellent overview and, and I like putting everything in perspective. What I've heard I think over the last few months or years or sometimes it seems like decades um, <laughs> it <laughs> it, 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 exactly right. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm going to sit down on that one. That, that's going to lead to a fight. A, I know. Shot. I, I take these things really well. Um, but the two hang-ups that I think, and this is great, it, it's really important for the board to understand that we really mostly stay above the 15,000-foot level. But where we fall below that is when we start doing tips, and when we start reading the individual strategies and saying, wait a minute, that won't work for my community, or this might get me fewer tips points. And so I think it's really important as we go through this to keep it all in perspective and stay at that higher level. So we're saying, should t good tip pro projects be helpful to our vision and our mission and help us obtain our objective? Sure. If we don't think they're being scored properly to that, then, th then we need to address that. But we shouldn't really be afraid of, of some interaction between the two because why in the world will we implement a project that we thought was directly contradictory to our long-term visions or goal for the region? And then when we get into the individual strategies, I think it's really important to keep in perspective there is no way to list what will work for Denver and what will work for Bennett and what will work for the counties and what will work for everybody in the room. This is a, this is a, I don't know what you called it, but uh, like a, <laughs> a, a, a brief 
suggested list of some options, some strategies that we might be able to employ, but not all inclusive. And I, I say that because when I first started coming to all these meetings, I would always say, that's really cute. But none <laughs> of that's going to work for Bennett. We don't have any trails. Well, you know what? We use different approaches, and now we have six and a half miles of trails. But it's not always the same strategy or the same approach that gets us there. So if we can kind of keep that in mind, I think that'll help. Absolutely. Thank you. Can I uh, just ask, I was going to ask Commissioner Partridge a question. You remember the meeting we had, Jennifer and I came down and everything, and you said something that I thought was really interesting about the goals that were in the boardroom in the, or in the commissioners. And you said everything that we think about, we check to those. Remember that conversation? And that's really what we're saying. That's the key, is that we look at the outcomes that we're trying to achieve. Does this thing work? Is this the thing that's going to, you know, the legs that's going to drive that? You know, that's really key. So thank you. Mayor Pro Timole. And I, I just want to follow up on some of Sue's comments that, that I agree with. And I, and I think, and, and I hope it's not true, because a board member kind of came up to me at, at CML and said, well, you don't think Metrovision should be tied to TIP? And I don't think anybody that sits at the board table doesn't think there should be elements of Metrovision that are included in TIP. And I, and I, think, um, I, I, I think it's very important that our TIP projects are somewhat aligned to our, our vision and goals. And, and it's going to be a matter of, but if you look at everything that's in our Metrovision, that's not all encompassed in our TIP. But I, I certainly consider the TIP and the work that we do with the federal transportation dollars to be a subset of the work that we do at this board table for the Metro Vision work. Um, and to me, there's kind of a, uh, you know, there's a circle of TIP and there's a circle of Metro Vision, and they overlap to some extent. But Metro Vision is really the higher thing that we do as the regional planning organization. So I do think we need to think big and aspirational with our v Metro Vision. And then I think we need to be very specific, more specific when we come down to what elements of Metro Vision make sense to be included in our TIP. I, I, so I just wanted to, to say that out there and kind of present that as a way for some of the other board members to think, clarify my position to some board members who may have misunderstood what I was saying there. And, but then also, I think it's a good way for all of us at the board table to think about Metrovision is bigger and more aspirational than our TIP. And it isn't going to directly relate to each individual community. Um, so. Council Member Thiel. I'm probably going to make Jackie really upset because I kind of disagree. The bottom line is our action strategies are going to be our tip. And quite frankly, guys, I, I'm kind of really kind of melancholy right now because I think back on the year that I've been on this board, uh, that I've been on this committee, excuse me, and I wonder how much time did we waste talking about things that we immediately said as a part of those conversations, oh, this shouldn't be in the tip. Don't worry, this won't be in the tip. Don't worry about it. This isn't going to be in the tip. And yet, what we see here, this, this um, road map that Jerry's drawn for us, guys, that's what our regional action strategies are. So again, I think it's great. I really am looking forward to uh, August now. I usually don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be hot. It's going to be hot. <laughs> But the bottom line is because I actually want to have those conversations about what have we been doing with objectives? What have we been doing with performance measures? What targets have we set that we don't want to bet our federal tax dollars on come tip time? I want to have those conversations, guys. I think those would be great conversations. Because, yeah, we could talk aspirational, but let's stay at the top of that pyramid when we talk aspirational. Right. And let's keep that, Jerry, I think you said it perfectly. Let's keep that line of sight from the top to the bottom. When we think about, we do have bridges that are crumbling. We do have roads that are, are subject to being washed out every, seemingly, uh, 60 years, not every 100 years. Let's keep that line of sight the whole way down because, again, I'm kind of feeling a little melancholy right now, feeling like, boy, we spent a lot of time talking about stuff that 
you know, we're never going to want to put our money where our mouth is. Mayor Pro Tem Malay. Um, you know what? I'm not going to I'm not going to belabor this. George and I will talk plenty. So. <laughs> <laughs> Councilmember uh -oh, told you. Yep. Warning. <laughs> Councilmember Kanich. Thanks. I think this is a really interesting kind of consensus that is emerging that, you know, one, there's a big picture. It's Metro Vision. It's not the detailed plan. It's a menu. I love that word menu. I think that's a really helpful term, and I, I want to keep using it. I also hear consensus that, well, of course, if, um, if we um, are going to have action strategies they Rob, should Rob, connect. Robert, can I ask Sorry. you to move your yes. mic a little bit? Sorry, it, we should Thank connect. You. So so it sounds like then, you know, when we think about where's the angst, if we have all this consensus, where's the angst? The angst is probably in something that isn't reflected here, which is prioritization perhaps, right? So, sure. and I do think that the truth is that the TIP process that I was a part of, you know, the development of, it, it, it actually does distinguish among things. There are some things that get one or two points, like uh, open space or housing or whatever. And then there are things like, you know, um, you know, VMT and passenger trips that get like 20 and 30, you know. So, so I do think that maybe if we have some consensus that it's okay to have an aspirational vision, and we have some consensus that the things that we fund should connect, that maybe one of the places we can find more common ground than we have been in the recent months is that not everything is the same emphasis, right? So there's a section on food in here, or there's a section on, and folks are concerned about that becoming connected to the tip, but it's maybe not as important to concern about being connected to the tip as what the emphasis is. And so I, my recollection of, you know, when I thought the points in front of me is that the emphasis of the connections was much greater on things we have a lot of agreement on, like transportation, you know, trips or things like that, you know, or congestion relief, right? Congestion relief is not unique to transit. It, it, congestion relief can be through traffic timing and other things. So I just, I think that we're spending a lot of time probably debating whether things that you know, have the smallest emphasis should be in the plan or not. Whereas maybe the way that we answer that is not that they don't they don't belong or they shouldn't be in there, but that they have different emphasis than other pieces where we have a lot of consensus. So I'm just throwing that out there as a framework that, that you all have helped me think about in the last few minutes and wonder if we might have a little less contention if we're thinking about prioritization <laughs> more than a pure inclusion or exclusion. So. Commissioner Holland. Uh, first of all, George, as a combat veteran, we don't have time to be melancholic. <laughs> Read your poetry. Yeah, we do. Come on. <laughs> uh, it's Tommy this and Tommy that and Tommy out the door. Oh, and the letter's home. Yes. Um, I, 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 I uh, ag agree with you, Robin. Uh, my, my concern is, is that, that a lot of times we create goals that are, uh, quote, aspir aspirational. But in reality, they they don't mesh with the re with the issues of funding, with the issues of of, of uh, uh, as you said prioritization. Uh, but I think most of the counties have mission statements um, that we we put forth, and ours is called the Line Arapaho. And every project that we do has to align to some degree to those to those um, aspirational uh, mission statements. And I think that's what we're trying to develop here, uh, Jennifer. And I, I, I just, I just think that um, uh, we we can't really nitpick uh, to to a degree to try to match up those aspirations with the pragmatic reality of of addressing uh, important uh, health, health, transportation, and and quality of life life issues for the state and for the metropolitan area. Can I, uh, Bob, just, uh, just one comment, if I can? Just, just, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, sorry. Go no, ahead. Oh, I, he threw me off now. No. Uh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I swear. I was thinking of something the commissioner I, I was and I just lost it. Yeah. I was, sorry. He was teasing me, and I lost it. So. Mayor Pro Tem Malay. I, I guess I just want to give an example of something that I think is going to be included in MetroVision, but I don't think is going to be included in our tip, and it is the water issue that's discovered here. I mean, we talked about 
um, in the 2035 uh, that water is important and a critical issue for this region, but we have no money in our tip to deal with the water issues. So to me, it's still part of our regional vision, but it is not part of our tip process. Thought of it. So, <laughs> Mayor Rakowski. Oh, sorry. You know, there's a way to look at this that we are totally ignoring. It would simplify things greatly, particularly comments that the distinguished ladies across the table have made, not to mention Mr. Teal. And that is, we are a two-part organization. We are an MPO, and under state statute, correct me if I'm wrong, executive director, we are a regional planning organization. Correct? Yes. If we were to break down things in terms of which hat we have on at a particular time, that would simplify things tremendously so that it would take into consideration water, housing, food to the degree we have authority to do so as a regional planning organization. And then when we're talking about transportation money, we're an MPO. So that in effect, we tag everything we do as either MPO or RPO. Okay, I, I heard a lot of affirmation that people like the format of looking at this in a linear fashion. So staff will be bringing back to the August meeting uh, that, that same format for all the things that we've already discussed. And we'll have uh, further discussion on, on, uh, on that format and clarification and things like that. So next agenda item is other matters. Anybody, any other matters for the good of the cause? Our next meeting is August 5th. Councilmember Teal is really looking forward to it. I'm sure everybody else is as well. And we didn't have to go to the hard stop at 521. We are adjourned. Good job. Hey George, we gotta we gotta exchange stories, man. Yeah, right. If you need parking validation, come and see me.